All right, I want to show you just how different the size of these two lenses are. We'll take this out in a sec because this is what I want to talk about today. This, uh, just for your reference, is uh, 28 to 60. Doesn't matter. What matters? Da, da, da. Is this. <laughs> this is my new Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens, which I'm sure you know if you were here because it's probably why you're watching this video. You want one. And I wanted one for a long time too. There it is with the lens cap on and for scale. <laughs> it's so different. That's <laughs> this is like a I mean this is a small lens. This is definitely a small lens. But this is a giant. This is a giant. So cool. Wanted to make a video on my first thoughts having used it. Like I said, I've always wanted to get one. I've wanted to try my hand at wildlife photography and videography in particular for a long time. I live on a farm with wild animals all around. We have elk in the area constantly. Bald eagles live in the trees just outside. It's felt stupid not being able to get a closer look at them for so long. So I've always wanted to and got a camera, started making YouTube content for my my personal channel, Malcolm Own Flood, uh, which is all about DIY music recording stuff, and fell in love with the video side of things quite a bit, I would say. Maybe too much. I'm spiraling down the rabbit hole, which I think some of you can probably relate to. <laughs> but I got my sights set on wanting one of these, a long lens, because I went out trying to get wildlife shots with my uh, 28 to 75 Tamron lens. And well, that is a fantastic lens and I did get some cool stuff. I was like, I gotta get way closer than that. And did some research, this looked like the solution. So I went and got one and <laughs> I love it. I love it. Like I said, this is a first thoughts, uh, kind of like top of my head video. And I am so happy. I have this thing. I gotta say, it has brought a lot of joy uh, in a short amount of time. So, start at the top. I like that it comes with this little case. Just a little cover. It's rigid down here the, where the, the lens goes. Feels like it's doing something. I like to keep it in that, uh, even when it's in the backpack so far. We'll see if that habit sticks. Lens cap has been invaluable living on the west coast of Canada on Vancouver Island. It has rained almost every day that I've tried to use this lens and this cap has kept that rain off the lens which has been great and and does a very good job at that. I, I don't know how I've gotten so lucky kind of like looking up at birds and stuff like that and still seeming to get away without water hitting the lens and having to worry about that too much. So that's been really nice. I, I remember when I was wanting this lens I, I didn't really understand how far 600 millimeters would get me. And I still don't really understand that, but I was like, okay, like I need to visualize this. And I was watching videos where people would try and show it, but it, it's a hard thing to show. And it is both more than I expected and also less than I expected. <laughs> and what I mean by that is I can't believe some of the shots I've gotten with this thing and all because I have this lens is it, just no way to get it without a lens this size, in my opinion, or being a ninja, I guess. But what I mean when I say it's less than I thought is that <laughs> I still wish I was closer a lot. <laughs> you still have to get up to those animals. There's just no getting around that. I don't think it matters what lens you have. You just need to get close to them. But that's kind of part of the fun of doing wildlife photography and videography is, is getting close and is getting in the action. So had a, a lot of fun. First two days were spent just out in the rain going after birds and my first day, kind of last thing I did, I got a beautiful kingfisher flew in front of me. I'll put that on the screen right now so you can check it out. Got a couple great shots of that I'm, that I'm really happy with and a little video of it. That was, that was really lucky. And I think that's, you know, part of this is you just got to put yourself out there and see what happens. You don't know if that bird's going to fly in front of you <laughs> and not notice you for long enough to get that photo and then constantly hone your abilities and, and know how to quickly get the camera set to what you need to capture that bird being there for that short amount of time. This weekend, I went out to a family cabin on, on the coast. It's like a boat access only spot 
and got some like sea lions and seals and more birds and that was really cool the sea lion actually jumped out and bit a seagull which is not normal i don't think maybe it had some fish or something i don't know i missed that but i got it hanging about after uh so stoked on that this little seal was just hanging on a boat as we were cruising by so i got real close to him way closer than i thought i'd be able to get and really happy with how those shots have turned out as well so those will all pop up on the screen for you here. Am I happy with this lens? Absolutely. The autofocus manual focus switch, I'm not using. I have a back focus manual focus button on my camera set right now. So if I want to go manual, I just hold that back focus button. So that's just been left in autofocus all of the time. The focus limiters, haven't used those either. Just hasn't been something that's come up. So it's always been on full for me, but I'm sure I'll be exploring that more as I, as I go here. I've been keeping the optical steady shot on all the time. I just don't think I know how to keep a lens this size stable enough not to need that. And I have done a little bit of experimenting with the modes. My understanding that mode one is kind of your most general panning mode kind of thing. And three is like sports and extreme. And I did think that when I went to mode three, especially on like the boat I was on, shooting from a boat is pretty challenging, that it did help a little, I think. All in all, I'm pretty amazed at how smooth things look it's challenging shooting handheld with a lens this size so i'm trying to think if i want to just suck it up and carry a tripod around more or try with the the monopod more or what my best bet is there but i do like just having it so that i can get up and run if i need to i think it's kind of just going to depend on what i'm after what if what i'm trying to find so yes all in all totally thrilled with this lens very happy with it. Something I did find myself using, which I didn't see in any of the videos I watched. Well, actually, you know what? First this, attaching these little hooks here to the lens so that I can just slide my strap on and off. That that was a no-brainer. Made I just kept the camera on all weekend, essentially. You just wouldn't find me without it hanging off the strap here. So those were really great. But I also put a little Arca Swiss plate on the bottom of the tripod collar here and that let me obviously quickly slide it in and out of tripods and whatnot. But then I could also loosen this and turn it. You can see like this. It's hard to show without a camera on there, I guess. But essentially I could just go to vertical mode very easily um, for, you know, the Instagram stuff or whatever while keeping it on the tripod if I wanted to. So really dug that as well. It was a, uh, yeah, very fun first week with this camera. If you're thinking about getting one, I honestly think you should. It's great. All in all, I guess that's just a glowing review. I'm just literally happy holding this thing, sitting here talking to a camera about it. So, okay. Thanks for watching. I hope to take you along for some of the rides soon on some kind of like POV shooting adventures. So stay tuned for that. Uh, consider giving me a subscribe so I can grow this channel. Thanks.